Good morning. Is everybody awake yet? Well, I'm Ori Hample. I'm, on, I'm one of the board members of Docs for Patient Care Foundation. And uh, I made one error in my career choice, and um, that is that I became a surgeon. I'm a urologist. And the reason that was an error is because I'm not a morning person. And for I hate getting up in the morning. My perfect time of day to wake up is somewhere between noon and two. And, um, and every day of my career, I start surgery at seven o'clock in the morning. It's, it's really torture. Anyway, so um, how many in this room, because of direct primary care, have altered their career plans to the point that they would be practicing medicine longer as opposed to retirement? That's amazing. That's amazing. All right, so let me, let me tell you what happened yesterday in case you slept uh, because you weren't a morning person like I wasn't. So, so in the morning, we got a, a great introduction from uh, Tim Norbeck from the Physicians Foundation. And uh, he gave us some uh, very interesting uh, quotes uh, from the past, which uh, are true today. Uh, my favorite quote from him yesterday was, uh, we're all born ignorant but one must work uh, hard to remain stupid. And, um, and, but basically, uh, he had hopes for uh, decreasing government regulations and mentioned to us that, to, that it's important as we go through life that honor and recognition are a very important motivation as, uh, uh, throughout our career. And then the first panel, uh, Paul Thomas brought us a concept I never heard of, of uh, Ekigai and uh, a reason for being, uh, like a why we're doing this. Uh, and he mentioned that we should have purpose uh, and care and passion and be authentic, have authenticity. Um, that, uh, and stress that what, what direct primary care is about, it's about value, it's not about volume, it's about providing a value. And, um, and then we had an excellent talk by uh, Ellen McKnight and who's basically proving that uh, a specialist can detach from the third party payer system. And uh, she does cash rheumatology. And uh, she uh, noted that uh, the people that do direct primary care are happy warriors. And uh, she brought along the, uh, <clears throat> the analogy of feudalism, where you have the physician vassals and then the lords of, uh, who work for the lords of the, uh, of the, of the system, be it the, the hospital, the government, the third party payers. And, um, and she said that was a failed uh, construct. Uh, what she said that there was a, a, a very important distinction in, in feudalism is that, uh, um, that we do indentured labor, but we're not indentured servants. And the difference is that indentured servants eventually became free. And in the current system, unless we change and do things like direct primary care, we can't practice freely as physicians. But that's not just about us, is if we're not free, then we can't be free to advocate for our patients. And uh, um, you know, along that line, another way to think about it is as long as you, are, you only sign the back of the paycheck and not the front of the paycheck, you really are not in a decision-making position. Um, and then, of course, uh, Josh Umber came out because no direct primary care conference is complete without uh, Josh Umber. And he talked about, um, uh, he talked about having a why and uh, a reason. And he said that the best why to have is, is our patience. And, and he brought on, uh, and reminded us of the important concept that, that as, as physicians, we, we we need to do no financial harm, not just do no harm, but do no financial harm, because that affects our patients too. And, um, and then uh, uh, Dr. Savage came on and uh, explained to us how the third parties are used to increase prices uh, and to steal our profession away. And, um, and that how the system went from guidelines to mandated algorithms from suggestions on what we should think about doing with our patients to what we must do with our patients. And um, I'm, I, I don't know, I think you guys need to judge for yourselves in the umber-savage heavyweight match. 
Uh, there were lots of jabs and lots of uppercuts, but I, I really didn't see a knockout blow from either side. But I do enjoy watching that fight every year. Um, but, uh, uh, and Josh reminded us that there's no physician shortage. What we have is an efficiency shortage. Um, and then Phil Eskew came on and showed us why none of us will understand anything Phil Eskew ever says. Um, he's in a completely different plane. No, 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 not in a negative way, because he understands things none of us will ever figure out. And he puts up paragraphs, and I read it, and then, you know, I had a triple major in college, and, you know, English was one of them. And I read those paragraphs, and I'm like, how does he read this stuff every day? I mean, I, I, he's amazing. He, I mean, he's truly a wealth of knowledge about intricacies and things and legalities and ways to do things, and he's an unbelievable resource. Um, and uh, again, he, he always brings up little pearls, and, and, and you really need to go through his stuff because you, his suggestions need to be incorporated into the contracting of direct primary care, of cash surgery, of anything that we do because we need to make sure that what we're doing is not insurance. It's listed as not insurance. And he talked about that what the relationship with our patients needs to be a selective marriage and not uh, an arranged marriage like one would have in a capitated uh, insurance model. And then uh, came the FMMA, the Free Market Medical Association panel, and uh, Dr. Keith Smith uh, talked to us about the, the cartel uh, in the healthcare industry and the healthcare economy and the collusion between hospitals and insurers. And of course, it all, it's always scary when he talks about that stuff and with the system that we're in and the system our patients are stuck in. And he mentioned about self-funded plans and brought uh, on Jay Kempton, who's an independent third party administrator, at, uh, a TPA. And uh, he, he mentioned about how to walk, work and communicate uh, with uh, uh, companies and uh, third-party plans in the ERISA marketplace, which is a huge untapped marketplace for direct primary care and, and uh, for people where, you know, the, the business makers and the decisions can actually, uh, or the, the business owners are decision makers. And, um, and then Lee Gross talked about... Uh, coverage versus care and, ex and explained, you know, how his model came around and showed graphs on why direct primary care just makes financial sense and how it basically puts money back into our patients' pockets. And, uh, you know, and what I was thinking when he came right, right after Keith Smith and Jay Kempton and, and what, when Lee showed his graph about that a family over 10 years can bank, you know, a quarter million dollars, I was thinking, Wait a minute, they just created a self-funded plan, didn't they? So um, this is, uh, I think that the, those are very powerful slides that show how, you know, and in Lee's words, uh, you don't bend the cost curve, you completely destroy it and break it. And then, uh, 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 and then uh, Mike Karuchik came on with uh, Dale Bellis and uh, we watched the radio show being, being done and participated in it. And as he talked about uh, Liberty Health Shares and, uh, and how the sharing uh, marketplace works as, as far as uh, uh, an adjunct and a wraparound uh, that's now embracing direct primary care uh, specifically. And, um, and he brought on the concept that uh, to get rid of the third party um, with, uh, in the current system and where because it has no cost comp containment. And this uh, system that uh, he's put together ha makes patients have a skin in the game and cost sharing so that the patients are very aware of the costs and that the direct purchaser of healthcare services uh, is the patient uh, themselves. And then uh, uh, we got a very interesting talk from uh, Ashley Back Backhut, uh, I don't know if I probably screwed up his name. Uh, which was very eye-opening in how the, the Rosen Hotel system basically brought uh, health care in-house and cut a tremendous amount uh, of overhead doing that. And uh, then we had our uh, uh, always very knowledgeable uh, Grace Marie Turner give us a talk, and, and she knows everything about health care in Washington, just everything. She's a, uh, a tremendous resource. 
Uh, I remember first uh, going back to 2010, and uh, um, and since then, it's uh, every time I hear her speak, I just know that she what she knows is just the tip of the, what she presents to us is just the tip of the iceberg of what she knows, and uh, nobody knows healthcare policy and the politics of it in Washington uh, better than Grace Marie Turner, and so. Um, there were, uh, and we also had uh, a talk from uh, Sidera Health uh, right before that, uh, who sponsored uh, the dinner last night and talked about uh, uh, the, their three prongs of individual ownership, direct access, and, uh, and a sharing community, and, uh, and provided a, a, as a wraparound for direct primary care because when you have direct primary care, the immediate question everybody asks, so what if I need a surgery? Of what if, what if I need a specialist? So that's very important. So, um, and uh, back to Grace Marie Turner, uh, she uh, mentioned that there were uh, three important changes in that, that now we have bridge coverage, which is a short-term uh, limited duration plans that can now last up to one to three years, not just a couple months. And then, uh, and then now patients can uh, put together, and small business and businesses can put together association health plans, and we also have health reimbursement arrangement. And uh, you know, she rem reminded us uh, of the golden rule, and that Washington controls the money. And of course, the golden rule is, whoever holds the gold makes the rules. And um, and uh, she, of course, knows what's going to happen in the election on Tuesday night, but she won't tell us. So. Um, um, anyway, so one more thing that uh, I wanted to, to bring out, and uh, it's something that's very important, and that uh, at the Oxford Patient Care Foundation, it's not that they were non-political, we're, we're apolitical, and uh, in our activities in healthcare, because remember, patients are Democrats, they're Republicans, they're independents. And we used to have t-shirts when we were a membership organization. T-shirts uh, used to say, we don't treat Democrats, we don't treat Republicans, we treat patients. And as, uh, uh, as you're talking to people, and we heard this yesterday, what, you know, how should we get started? We'll just start asking and talking to people. Well, as we talk to people, it doesn't matter where they lie in the political spectrum. They need health care. It doesn't matter whether what they think about what should happen in Washington or with healthcare politics or with healthcare policy, they need a doctor. And it doesn't matter where they lie in the political spectrum, direct primary care works for them too. And remember that direct primary care was one of the pathways in one of the states under the Affordable Care Act. So as we go through this, uh, just because somebody may not be free market and everything, or just because somebody may have different political ideas, uh, everybody still needs care, and direct primary care works for everybody. So, let us begin our day. Um, wait, one second. Oh, Lee's, oh, Lee's going to begin our day. That's much better than me beginning of the day. Um, so, Lee's going to tell you about all the pathways we have for you today. Good morning. Thank you, Ori. All right. So um, it may seem like we have a, uh, a smaller room uh, of people today. It's because, uh, frankly, we had 70 people in our office manager's breakout session. So uh, that kind of ran a little, bit, a little bit long, but they will be uh, joining us here shortly. So everything is going to kind of get kicked off here at 8.30 in the morning. just kind of want to give you the, uh, how things are going to work out today. Yesterday really was just, just building the framework uh, for, you know, what this is, what direct primary care is, what the problems in healthcare are, uh, and today we're just going to kind of put the meat on the bones. Uh, we're really going to get a dive down into actually how to run the practice, the the uh, the nitty gritty of you know marketing, getting people in the door, uh, how to how to uh, open that umbrella wider, get specialists uh, into the system, and and really sort of empower you to leave here with the knowledge uh, of. Uh, of how to run a successful DPC practice. Just a couple housekeeping uh, points. You're going to get, if you were not here last night for dinner and did not get the CME form for yesterday's activities, the, re the, the reviews, make sure you pick up one at the registration desk because if you do not fill out that form, you will not get CME credit. You will get another one today. So if you leave early, uh, if you're not going to stay till the end, make sure you pick up a CME uh, 
uh, form for today's activities or you will not get credit. Uh, make sure you turn that in at the registration desk before you go. Uh, for those of you that, that uh, purchased the early uh, scholarship tickets uh, that were eligible for, uh, for that scholarship, we will be asking you for a, uh, if you, you're eligible for a refund of that, uh, uh, thanks to the grant from the Physicians Foundation. If you choose to donate that to Docs for Patient Care Foundation, uh, we are all volunteers, but we do need your financial support to continue activities like this going on into the future. So uh, we would love for you to make that tax-free uh, contribution to our 501c3 nonprofit organization. So uh, we would greatly appreciate that contribution or any other contribution, nothing is too big or too small. Um, so having said that, uh, track one generally historically has been geared towards newer practices. Track two has generally traditionally been geared towards people that have been established. This year it's not quite so clear cut, so make sure you look at the uh, presentations that are being given in each uh, in, in each track and for each time slot and decide where you want to go. We've intentionally given some gaps between the panels so that you have time to move from session to session. Track one will be in here. Track one will be live streamed all day long. Track two will be upstairs in salon two. So if you go up those escalators to your left straight ahead, it's almost directly above where we are right now. Salon 21, salon 22 is track two. Uh, both sessions will be videotaped, so if you go to one uh, and miss the other one, come back. We'll send out the information to, uh, to the links on our webpage, uh, and you can come back in a few weeks and see the video from all the sessions. All the slides will be made available uh, for download, so uh, trying to furiously copy down uh, Phil Eskew's slides is not humanly possible, so we will put, the, put that information out uh, for you. So uh, we have a a great day for you. I know we are in, in Orlando. I know you have families that want to get to the parks and do all sorts of really cool, fun, exciting stuff. Uh, first of all, I appreciate that you spent the whole day with us. This room was packed at 8 o'clock last night uh, with the distractions that you have in Orlando that this room was still full. I thank all of you for that, for that uh, incredible participation in our programs. But I say that to point out that we'd love for you to continue to participate through the entire session today and not bail early because uh, as much as every single track and every single panel is going to be awesome today, you will not want to miss the closing panel. Uh, it is by far uh, every year uh, the most invigorating and exciting panel that we that we put on. So uh, Julie Gunther's panel, that, that case session study, we have uh, six uh, different people in various stages uh, of practice from new startups to well-established and uh, we're going to be doing sort of rapid fire stories, uh, uh, sort of talk show host moderated inspirational stories about getting you pumped up and leaving you uh, out of here on a high note. So uh, make sure that you can attend those last sessions and uh, continue to make those contacts. There'll be plenty of opportunities to exchange information, exchange ideas, exchange numbers, uh, and want to again begin those uh, friendships and connections that will continue through the rest of your life and through your career. So thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. We're going to start everything off uh, promptly at 8.30. Have a good morning.